What's up everybody, this is Joma John Fair Innovations and I'm so excited to bring you today's video. So today I'm going to show you a little trick you can use to solve area formulas for triangles where you don't have the height. Now before we get into the video, if you enjoy it, do make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another mass topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoy the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for all the videos as they come out. Now, you may have been familiar with area of a triangle, which traditionally has been half of a base times height. And let's use it for example on this triangle. It's a nice right angle triangle and we can clearly identify our base and our height. Our base is going to be 3 and our height is going to be 4 centimeters. So we just simply plug this into our formula, replacing base and height with the values that we can see in the triangle. So this is going to read now as the area of a triangle is going to equal half of 3 multiplied by 4. Well 3 multiplied by 4 is 12 and then 12 divided by 2 would give me 6. And in this case, because we're using centimetres, our units are going to be centimetres squared. So our answer would be 6 centimetres squared. In these cases, it's nice and simple. This is traditionally how you probably would have learnt how to find the area of a triangle. But what happens if, say, I flip or rotate my triangle and I don't, I don't give you the information that this is in fact a right angle triangle? So the triangle now would look like this. We've got a triangle that's got a side of three centimeters, a side of four centimeters, and a side of five centimeters. And keep in mind, because um, we're assuming that we don't know that it's a right angle triangle, so there's no way for us to be able to, to definitively say that if I rotated it, it would give me the exact height. So what would you do in this situation? Well, what you can actually use is what's called Heron's formula. And it's brilliant and it looks far more complicated than what it actually is. So bear with me when I say it because at first you're going to think, well, this is a bit much. But honestly, it's not nearly half as complicated as it may first seem. So the formula is given as the area equals the square root of S multiplied by the bracket of S minus A multiplied by the bracket of S minus B multiplied by the bracket of S minus C. Now that all seems quite complicated, but we'll break it down so you can understand it further. So A, B, and C are your sides, and it doesn't matter which order you put them in. You can put them in ascending order, you can put them rotating clockwise or any clockwise. It doesn't matter, as long as one of the sides represents only one of the letters. So we can make A, for example, 3 centimeters, we can make B 4 centimeters, and we can make C 5 centimeters. So these are our sides. So once we've worked out S, we can then finish off our formula. S actually refers to what's called the semi-perimeter. Now, perimeter just means the length all the way around. So the semi-perimeter just means half of that. So all we do is we take our sides, our three, our four, and our five in this case, and we just divide it by two because we only want half of it. So let's work that out, shall we? So we've got three plus four is going to give me seven. 7 plus 5 will give me 12, and then 12 divided by 2 would give me 6. So now I've got my value for S, which is 6. And all I do now is put this into Heron's formula. So now our formula is going to read as the square root of 6 multiplied by the bracket of 6 minus 3 multiplied by the bracket of 6 minus 4 multiplied by the bracket of 6 minus 5. And now we use our trusted order of operations in order to break this down. So firstly, we'll deal with the brackets. So 6 minus 3 would give me 3, 6 minus 4 would give me 2, and 6 minus 5 would give me 1. And because these are all multiplying, our formula is now going to read as the square root of 6 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. And now we work out the multiplication. So 3 multiplied by 2 would give me 6, and 6 multiplied by 1 would remain 6. So now it's going to be the square root of 6 multiplied by 6. And 6 multiplied by 6 is 36, but when we're finding the square root, we're actually trying to find a number that we can multiply by itself to give the exact same answer. So the square root of 36 will in fact bring us back to the answer of 6. And because we were dealing with centimetres, our answer is going to be 6 centimetres squared. Which in fact ends up being the exact same answer as we got before. So clearly we did it right. 
Well, there you have it. Now you have a formula yourself that you can use in order to solve areas of triangles when you don't have the height, as long as you have the three sides. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do practice it yourself because honestly, that is the best way to learn these sort of things. But always stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.